So I decided to play, and at 55, it, it seems to uh, cook pretty good. Notice I'm in the kitchen, um, and things were going good. I was increasing it by 5. I started at like 15. Started getting sparks around 30. No actual welds though. Now, now I got, this is two shots, uh, two separate areas. And this actually does not do, actually, <laughs> does a little better than I thought, hold on. Let's see here. Yeah, it, it does, uh, uh, okay. That's pretty good. I think that actually tore the nickel coming off. Let's take a look. There's no burn marks. And yeah, it looks like it tore the four sections coming off. Three out of the four actually tore through. So three out of four were good. I think I need to slightly realign these guys a little bit. At first I was only getting a weld on the left. And then I had to drop this one down a little bit. I had a little tension to it, so this way this one has more tension. Then it comes up with one, and then comes up with the other. Then hits the momentary switch. The left one, the switch is on. Uh, but then I put it up to 60, and the breaker went trip. But I did notice that after the breaker went trip, I think the refrigerator came on. I think it may run on the same breaker. That may be the issue. So th this was 55, and this was actually pretty good. So let's go ahead and try it again on 55. With the refrigerator running, see what happens. Of course, that happens is I trip the breaker again. I call it the night um, and move it. Now the kitchen is a 20 amp breaker. 455 is a good number, but I just have to do it more than one pulse to get it to actually stay. Plus, I'm using nickel now. That's all been used. I guess you could say. Let me see if I can go to the right, sort of. There we go. And try to give it straight up, even tension. Found out the green light is for when it triggers, by the way. Red is good, green is trigger. If it flashes red, that means there's a problem with the unit. Ooh. All right, that was a new piece of nickel on the right side there. It wasn't touched up, and it just kind of... Yeah, I think I need 60, so I need to run it on a breaker that doesn't have anything else going on. But 60 with a refrigerator in the kitchen, we'll pop it. Now, I guess we could try, we, in theory, we could try everything. We could try uh, to double, dap, double tap it. Let's uh, bend it over to a new piece of nickel here. Like so, since I'm going to be running this one-handed. So I can tap it, give it a second to recover. Let me go back to the left hand. Holding the camera. Make sure I bend the nickel up out of the way so it's not, uh, not touching the bottom of the battery. Oh, this is just impossible. I'm going to have to tripod this later for an official video, but... Alright, so, now uh, somebody also said if you hold it at an angle you get more sparks because the copper actually kind of goes in better. Let's try that. I'll hold the battery up at an angle, like this. Let's see what happens. Put some right on the edge of the nickel there. There's one. There's two. So if I don't move it and I double tap it, I think it's a good medium for the US to even run on a basic household breaker with other things going on like refrigerator and stuff. Oh, good thing I don't care about these batteries. And uh, oh, it landed on the nickel and it stayed on. That's a good sign. Let's see, can I pull it off? Oh, I heard it tear. The second one, it doesn't want to come off either. 
it tore also. Okay, so you always have the option, if you can't run higher, it definitely tore that uh, piece on the end here. Tore that in half. Still dirty. Yep, it is. There's all the little pieces being left now. So, oh, that's the sharp one that I left behind. That's the one I just tore off now. So yeah, this double tapping definitely does tear well. So double tap is an option. Um, or go into a breaker where your refrigerator is not running. <laughs> that's also a better option. Uh, a 20 amp breaker that doesn't have much load on it, which would be my washer breaker in my case. Oh, see when it starts to weld to the nickel like that, I think that that's... I'm going to start putting a hole in the nickel soon, it's too much. I'm just barely pushing. Oh, wow. Oh, we're good there. Did I rip two holes? Yeah, it did. Plus, we have to start filing or cleaning these off now, because... You get to that point where you just get corrosion on, so you're supposed to file them and clean them. Plus, they need to go a little bit closer together, in my opinion, which might actually increase the uh, the current fire. Let's go 59. Let's see if we blow a breaker or not. Most that happens is I have to reset my uh, clock again on the microwave. So let's see what happens, huh? Well, 59 took. Wow. But I think it only took one side. It did. But, you know, that's because I got all these... I, I was dumb enough to go into the middle. Where I got all kinds of other stuff going on there. Let's wrap it around the battery again. That's so where we know we have a... Uh, nice clean areas in the battery. I'm going to do the wraparound thing again. Oh, popped the breaker. Yep, so I'm going to get the good weld at 59, too high. Make wave off. But how did we do? We, uh, we did really good. So, yeah, sometimes you know you get a good weld just because the breaker pops. Did I get both of them? Evenly? Oh yeah. Any bear marks on there? It went through it, didn't it? Yeah, it's too too much. It's not supposed to go through the nickel. That's a little too much. But as far as how good it stuck. Uh, it stuck good. It ripped it. Yeah, okay. So, hey, we can get this to work. Let's turn it off. We can play with it more tomorrow. I'll have to go reset my breaker. <laughs>